Whoa, it looks like I have a halo. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And today we're going to be discussing these objects that you see behind me. We're going to be talking about ring galaxies, and specifically some of the recent discoveries in regards to these unusual objects, but also briefly talk about what we know and don't know about them, because even today these are still very mysterious objects. Or to be more specific, very mysterious galaxies that are actually quite rare, and whose origin is still somewhat difficult to explain, at least in some cases. But let's start with the basics. Generally, when it comes to different types of galaxies, we can sort of divide them into three main types. We have spiral galaxies, like the one we live in, the Milky Way galaxy. We have elliptical galaxies, with the most famous one being M87, where the scientists took a picture of the central black hole. And then we have something known as the irregular galaxies, similar to the satellites of the Milky Way, Large Magellanic Cloud and Small Magellanic Cloud. These galaxies generally represent the vast majority of everything we see in the universe. But even a hundred years ago, the scientists already started collecting a kind of a database of another type of galaxies that they usually refer to as peculiar galaxies, basically unusual galaxies that do not fit into one of these categories. And just like the name implies, usually these galaxies will have something strange about them. And the most famous database that basically has all these galaxies collected is known as ARP, Atlas of Peculiar Galaxies. And some of these peculiar galaxies would often contain some kind of an elliptical galaxy, usually a relatively small one, very often surrounded by a ring or even several rings. And in some cases, these rings would be quite incredible. But in other cases, they would be actually almost like the main part of the galaxy. While in other cases, they might even form even stranger shapes. But in pretty much most cases, all of these rings will usually contain extremely bright blue stars, which very often represents extremely young stars that recently formed somewhere in this galaxy. And today the scientists believe that at least 1 in 10,000 of all galaxies out there is going to be some kind of a ring galaxy, which basically represents like 0.01% of all the galaxies out there, doesn't sound like a lot, but that means that there are probably up to about 200 million different galaxies containing rings in the observable universe based on the approximate number of galaxies we think currently exists in the observable universe. And not so long ago, the Citizen Scientists project, run by several scientists, combined the power from thousands of different volunteers in helping identify various galaxies with artificial intelligence to essentially discover 40,000 new ring galaxies we never knew existed, with many of them featuring a lot of different formations which are not particularly easy to explain. In this particular case, the scientists used an algorithm known as Zubot that you can actually find in the description below to sort of train the AI in identifying various galaxies really quickly, suggesting of course that there are quite a lot of these galaxies out there, but making them still kind of rare. And more importantly, highlighting the important point. We still don't entirely understand how all of these galaxies form, but we now might actually have an explanation for at least some of them at least for some of the more famous ones, maybe not all of them, but definitely some of them. But I guess let's start right here with the most famous of them all, the original one, the Hoag's object, named after the astronomer who originally found this. This is actually a simulation created by NASA, technically a sonification, where you can kind of hear what this galaxy would, I guess, sound like if you were to convert some of these frequencies into sounds. Let's listen. Now, the interesting thing about Hoag's object is that if you actually look really closely at some of the images of this object, you'll discover that there's another ring galaxy inside of it. And considering the rarity of these objects, this event by itself, the alignment in this case, is ridiculously rare. Obviously, because of the redshift, the smaller galaxy is much, much farther away. But nevertheless, this is a pretty interesting and quite an unusual coincidence. And the other thing about this galaxy is that even today, even after all of these explanations, we still don't really know how it formed. This is still the most mysterious ring galaxy out there and nobody knows exactly what happened to give it this perfect shape. But we might be able to get some answers from some of the other galaxies that the scientists have explored before. And in this case, the first hint, I guess, comes from where we usually find these galaxies. So normally, if you were to look around the universe, you would usually find these galaxies either by themselves or with very, very few partners. 
you are quite unlikely to discover these galaxies in large galactic clusters with a lot of mass inside. And that by itself already presents a bit of a hint. It seems that these galaxies generally form in locations where there is not a lot of interaction with other galaxies. And that, to scientists, implies that they might actually possess a lot of gas, a lot of gas that has not been touched by anything. This gas, in effect, if condensed in just the right way or if moved by something, can then suddenly start forming clumps and then start the starburst activity that's often visible from really far away and is often responsible for producing some of these blue bright stars. In other words, the location seems to kind of matter and also the amount of untouched gas present in these galaxies. But I guess what's still kind of difficult to explain is the gap between the blue stars and the central, much older region that usually possesses a lot of red stars. These are stars that are extremely old and might have existed in this galaxy for over 5 billion years. Whereas the stars on the outskirts are much, much younger, with some only being several million years old. Now, when these galaxies were just discovered, there were quite a lot of unusual explanations. For example, some scientists thought that maybe these are just gravitational lensing effects. Kind of like the typical Einstein ring that usually forms from very massive clusters. But pretty quickly the scientists proved that this was not the case. Some scientists thought that maybe this is actually just a kind of an alignment between an object that seems to be really far away and really close. In other words, instead of having two objects together, we're just basically looking at one ring and one galaxy somewhere far away or much closer to us. That's also not the case because the redshift measurements for each one of these galaxies establish that all these objects are connected together and that a lot of these rings are actually surrounding the galaxy and seem to contain the mass coming from the galaxy itself. But certain ring galaxies, like the one that you see right here, also suggest that some of these rings are not necessarily circular. Some of them seem to be stretched and resemble an object that possesses an elliptical orbit. Now, because of the distribution of the gas and the stars in this ring, it becomes possible to figure out what most likely happened to this galaxy. In this case, we can clearly see that there are quite a lot of new stars forming around the ring, but that in certain regions, the gas and the actual star formation is much higher in terms of density. And on top of this, the elongated shape sort of suggests some kind of a gravitational interaction with something else. Possibly this other galaxy that's sort of nearby. But it's sort of difficult to establish distances in space, and it's kind of difficult to judge if this galaxy actually did undergo some kind of a collision. But the scientists managed to figure this out by looking at this in the X-rays. And specifically by using the iconic Chandra X-ray Observatory. In this case, you're looking at the same galaxy, but from a, I guess, slightly shifted perspective. That other galaxy nearby is now somewhere right here, and we have another galaxy relatively close to it. Now, if we look at the optical light, it doesn't really seem like anything is going on here. But if we look at the X-ray light, we suddenly see that because of the interaction, there is now a much higher production of possibly black holes and neutron stars, which are emitting a lot of X-rays. And this seems to happen both in the ring galaxy and both of the galaxies next to it, more so in the one on the left. Here's what all this sort of looks like if you combine both the optical light and the X-ray light. And you can actually almost see a kind of a line stretching between these two galaxies right here which to the scientists behind several studies suggested that the explanation for these rings is essentially some kind of a galactic passage where one galaxy shot through the other one, in some sense creating a kind of a ripple effect, which then forced a lot of gas surrounding the galaxy to form over density, which then started to produce new stars. But because there could be three galaxies involved here, some of these rings ended up a little bit skewed and not perfectly circular. And so to some extent, this gives us a kind of a hint on what might have happened in a lot of these ring galaxies. Like for example, something similar could have happened here, maybe a little bit more extreme because it does look like one of the rings is now sort of even missing the galaxy in the middle. And in this case, it seems to only really happen to these lonely galaxies or galaxies far away from clusters, which usually have a lot of gas on the inside. And so when this gas is disturbed by some kind of a passage or some kind of a collision where another galaxy goes through it, it might result in a sudden production of stars from all of this extra gas. And some of the other galaxies, like one of the nearest ones to us, NGC 1291, even shows us how these galaxies evolve afterwards. You can sort of see how the ring dissipates and even turns into a kind of a spiral structure. Here's a slightly more detailed observation here, 
with the ring becoming the spiral with time. And here's what it looks like in the ultraviolet light and the visible light. And they all actually seem to evolve slightly differently. There's another really iconic galaxy known as the Cartwheel Galaxy that represents one of the most remarkable ring galaxies we've found so far. Remarkable because of these unusual filaments that seem to connect the ring to the rest of the galaxy. Which is why it got the name Cartwheel because it sort of looks like a cartwheel. And in this case, it's believed that that other nearby galaxy that's also forming a lot of young stars might have basically caused the formation of the ring in this galaxy. Although in the case of the smaller galaxy, it did not form a ring, it formed something else. And the more detailed observations in other types of light essentially show the scientists that this galaxy is slowly reforming its original spiral shape. So basically that's, once again, a kind of a transition galaxy, with the ring galaxy slowly becoming the spiral galaxy once again. And that's how the scientists believe these cartwheel spokes form as well. But obviously some of these collisions would be pretty difficult to explain especially because the original galaxy is sort of gone. Or maybe it just becomes so dim that it becomes almost impossible to detect it. Either way, in most cases, collisions seem to explain the formation of these unusual rings. Although in some cases, like in this galaxy known as Zwicky228, it's even been suggested that maybe the galaxy itself got stretched into the ring because of the collision. Especially if it's almost a head-on collision between two relatively massive galaxies. But more importantly, several different galaxies have been discovered in the process of essentially becoming ring galaxies. This one I guess being one of the more famous ones. In this case, it's pretty obvious that there are two galaxies colliding, with one of them already sort of forming into a ring. Maybe not a perfect ring, but ring nevertheless. Which at least to some extent, takes care of this mystery of how these unusual galaxies form. But there's one small problem, or possibly a couple of these. Hogue's object and a few other similar galaxies seem to be the peculiar types of the ring galaxies. First of all, they are just a little bit too perfect. Second of all, they don't seem to contain any neighbors. As in, they don't actually have another galaxy near them that could have activated the formation of the ring. And so even though this is technically considered to be a prototype for a typical ring galaxy, in this case it seems to be an exception. This galaxy might have formed in an entirely different way possibly through some other process, or possibly through a similar process which ended up sort of removing the other galaxy, or might have happened such a long time ago that the other galaxy is long gone. Which then raises the question of why is the ring still around, and why are the stars still forming as well? And so when it comes to ring galaxies, there's still at least one major mystery. The original ring galaxy, known as the Hoag's object. But even today, quite a lot of different scientists and quite a lot of different teams are actively trying to resolve some of these mysteries, and so I'm sure in the next few years, using some of the new telescopes and new observations, they might actually finally see what's going on here. Especially by investigating this galaxy in the infrared with James Webb telescope, or by looking at it in the X-rays and the ultraviolet light, and seeing what exactly is happening both inside and at the outskirts of this galaxy. Which also officially makes Hoag's object a non-typical ring galaxy, an exception to the rule. But I guess once we discover more or once the scientists find something else, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. There are going to be so many new studies coming out because of James Webb Telescope and we're going to be discovering so much more. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that now also features James Webb Telescope in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.